Supercurrent chromatography is a technique for the purification or extraction of components from a mixture. Unlike conventional chromatography, such as HPLC, or flash chromatography, countercurrent chromatography has a liquid stationary phase held in place by the unique spinning motion of a coil. In countercurrent chromatography centrifuges, tubing is wound in a coil onto a drum called a bobbin, which is rotated in planetary motion. That is to say, the bobbin is revolving around the central axis of the sun gear, while simultaneously rotating about its own axis at the same angular velocity. A two-phase solvent system is placed inside the coil. A simple example of such a system would be heptane and water, but a more likely system for a purification might consist of heptane, ethyl acetate, methanol and water. This gives a two-phase system with an upper organic layer consisting mainly of heptane and ethyl acetate and a lower aqueous layer consisting mainly of methanol and water. When the coil is rotated with the two-phase solvent system inside, the planetary motion creates a mixing effect akin to the swish-swash motion that occurs when a tube of two liquids is tilted from side to side. The net result of this motion is the formation of waves and a wave mixing effect. As the coil travels through its planetary motion cycle, zones of mixing and settling move along the phases, coincident with the low and high accelerations caused by the epicyclic motion of the coil. The mixing zones are coincident with low accelerations and take the form of the waves mentioned earlier. The settling zones are coincident with high accelerations and take the form of a smooth interfacial area. When a sample is introduced into the centrifuge, it will experience an enormous number of mixing and settling steps. A typical countercurrent chromatography coil may have 30 loops and spin at 1,200 rpm. It will therefore undergo 2.16 million partitioning steps per hour. That is 30 loops times 1,200 revolutions per minute times 60 minutes in an hour. All this generates high resolution separations based on each component's differential partitioning behavior in the phase system, which is characterized by the distribution ratio Kd. Determining the distribution ratios of the main components in a mixture allow the countercurrent chromatography purification to be predicted with amazing accuracy. Here we see a prediction of two components, eluting from the countercurrent chromatograph, one with a distribution ratio of 0.5, the other with a distribution ratio of 2. The synchronous planetary motion of the countercurrent chromatography bobbin has a special feature significant in the design of instruments. There is no twisting of the flow tubes linking the coil to the pump and detector. This is because the rotation of the bobbin about its own axis unwinds the twist produced by its motion around the sun gear. This gives the instruments no rotating seals to cause trouble. Overall, the technique has a number of distinct advantages over traditional solid phase chromatography, such as High loading capacity. Even the smallest countercurrent chromatography centrifuge of 5 ml capacity is capable of accepting an injection loading of 50 mg of crude material. No need to filter. Cell debris and particulates are tolerated. A one step purification from a crude extract is possible. No columns to replace. The coils are robust and last the lifetime of the instrument far lower solvent consumption than HPLC of the same size. Furthermore, a simple analysis method allows complete recycling of the mobile phase, further reducing solvent consumption. No drifting peak retention over time. A fresh coil is made for each batch of runs. This makes it easier to satisfy the regulatory authorities when purifying under good manufacturing practice regulations no loss of components from irreversible adsorption. The recovery of components is always 100%.
predictable scale-up from milligram to kilogram quantities. In line with most preparative techniques, some preliminary studies have to be performed before the crude material is injected into the instrument. Predominantly, this consists of identifying a suitable two-phase solvent system. At the Advanced Bioprocessing Centre, here at the Brunel Institute for Bioengineering, we've developed a systematic step-by-step -step protocol that takes an inexperienced user logically through the process. The solvent selection part has been fully automated using a liquid handling robot and HPLC or GC allowing the selection process to be operated automatically without anyone being present. Appropriate phase systems are selected by screening a graded range of solvent systems to identify one with a suitable distribution ratio for the compound of interest. This shows a selection table which covers a range from moderately polar butanol and water to non-polar heptane and methanol. Alternative tables exist for extremely polar and extremely nonpolar compounds, and also for employing different solvents to improve solubility. When using the liquid handling robot, all systems are made up in 4 milliliter volume. After phase separation, samples are taken from the top and bottom phases, analysed by an appropriate assay, which is frequently HPLC or gas chromatography and distribution ratios calculated from the peaks detected in each solvent system. The whole process takes several hours, depending primarily on the length of each analysis assay. But its automated nature means it can operate unattended, even overnight, and the operator need only look through the data to determine the best solvent system to use. When the distribution ratios for all solvent systems in a particular table are studied, a value of less than 0.2 will make the compound elute very quickly, not giving it much chance to separate from the other components. On the other hand, a value of greater than 5 will mean long elution times and possible band broadening. The degree of separation between the target compound and any of its contaminants can readily be calculated from alpha, the separation factor. Furthermore, once the performance of a particular countercurrent chromatography instrument under various run conditions has been observed, it's relatively easy to predict the minimum alpha value necessary for a given purification, helping in the selection of the best solvent system to use.